Hi there, welcome to this film which is about turning one sort of formula into another and in particular empirical formulae into molecular formulae um, and hopefully by the end of it you'll be able to use some information you're given about a molar mass of a substance to turn its empirical formula into its molecular formula and if you're really going to understand what you're doing here then it's important that we under remember some definitions of terms and they are in particular um, empirical formula and molecular formula and the difference between those two is that the empirical formula of a substance is just the simplest whole ratio of atoms in a substance whilst a molecular formula is actually the well it's, it is the number of atoms in a molecule so if I give you an example there of um, let's say glucose which is C6H12O6 that's not the simplest whole number ratio of atoms in that substance. In actual fact, if we wrote the simplest whole number ratio of atoms, it would look like that. So that's the empirical formula of glucose, but that's its molecular formula. So that's the difference between the two types of formula. Now then, if we look at a question that we might be given about this, um, this question is actually given us an empirical formula here. Um, it says a compound of carbon, oxygen and hydrogen is found to have the empirical formula CO2H. If 4.5 grams of that compound occupies 1.208 litres at 103.2 kilopascals and 27 degrees, what will its molecular formula be? Okay, so what we're actually trying to do here is we're trying to determine how much bigger the real formula is than, or not the real formula, but the empirical formula is how much bigger it is than that. So is it C2O4H2, for example? Or is it even more than that? Is it maybe C12O24H12? We just don't know yet until we start plugging some of the numbers into here. Okay? So, um, what we need to do is we need to use the data that we're given to find a molar mass. Okay? Now, why should we want to do this? Well, because um, if we know that our empirical formula is CO2H, well, if we added up all the atomic masses here of 12 and 16 times 2 and 1, then we'd find that it, it would equal 45. So if I was told, for example, that the molar mass was 90 in the question, or if I was given some information that enabled me to find that, then I'd know the actual formula would have to be twice as big because the molar mass is twice as heavy as this. Let's say it was uh, 135, then it's three times as heavy as that, and so the molecular formula would have to be C3O6H3. Okay, so let's just um, work through this problem and we'll see if we can get an answer. Now, this question didn't tell us the molar mass straight away, so um, we might need to use another formula that we know of. Okay, now we were told pressures and volumes, okay? We were told a volume there, 1.208 litres, and a pressure of 103.2 kilopascals. And we were told a temperature. Now, we know that PV equals NRT, and that's a formula that we've got that includes all those things, pressure, volume, and temperature. So this formula can be rearranged to say N equals PV over RT, right? And if we're told the mass, which we are, then we now know the mass and we know a formula for the number of moles. So we can rearrange this slightly and make it say that the molar mass is going to be equal to the mass divided by the number of moles, which, remember, is PV on RT. So let's go and find it. Let's go ahead and find out what those things are. Well, that means that the molar mass is equal to 4.5 grams divided by well the pressure that was 103.2 kilopascals. Dots are a little bit difficult to do with this pen. Um, and we'll multiply that by the volume, which was 1.208 liters. And then we'll divide that lot by R. Well, R is gas constant. That's on your data sheet, so there's no need to remember it. It's 8.314. And multiply it by the temperature. Now, the only thing here is you've got to remember that temperature is in Kelvin. So we've got to add 
273 Kelvin to whatever temperature we've got in degrees centigrade so that's going to give us 300 Kelvin and we do that some and in fact we find that the answer is about 90 okay so if we know that our empirical formula was CH2O and that this had a molar mass if it actually existed in that form of 45 and our molar mass is 90 then 90 divided by 45 is 2 so our actual formula is going to be twice as big as this one and it's going to be C2H4O2 so there you are that's how you turn an empirical formula into a molecular formula sometimes you'll be given a little bit m more information than that sometimes you won't have to find the number of moles you might even be told that or you might just be told the molar mass straight away okay but what it, whichever way you're doing it the aim of the game is to basically get to this step where you find out how much bigger the real molar mass is than the molar mass of the empirical formula